Hello and thank you for stopping by. Today I'm working on this Toro Z Master mower. The complaint on this is that when the owner was cutting his grass, the blades just cut off. He pushed the PTO switch in, pulled it out a couple of times, and nothing happened. So I'm here today to check it out to see whether it might be this switch, a fuse, hopefully not the clutch, or maybe just a burnt wire. Let me get this mower out of the shed and we'll check it out. Okay, I wanted this to stay up there. All right. This is the same whether you have a zero turn or a riding mower, where it could be this switch, a wire, a fuse, or a clutch. Normally on the riders and on some of the zero turns, this switch is on top, somewhere over here on the panel, and they're easy to get to. Over here, I haven't worked on this particular type before I might have to take this plate off to get to the switch I'm gonna lift the seat and we'll see what it looks like underneath the first thing I'm gonna do let's see what we have over here okay now this switch is under here and the PTO would be right under the engine let's see if we find the John, give me that flashlight, please. And shine that light in right there. Okay, and here's the wire for the PTO. So what I'm gonna do first is disconnect this over here without taking the switch out. I'm gonna check with the voltmeter to see if I'm getting 12 volts to the end of the switch. If I'm not getting 12 volts to the end of this wire, then I have to check to see if I'm getting voltage to the switch itself. Now let's see what fuses we can find in here before we even start. Okay. Wiring harness. Let's see. Johnny, you see the fuses? You don't see them? While I was waiting for these parts to come in, I decided to start the video and when I went to look for the work that I've done on this unit so far the video was gone I don't know what happened I might have deleted it when I deleted some other videos that I no longer needed but I'm just going to do a quick recap on how I diagnosed that this clutch had to be replaced and also the switch and the, the original complaint on this was the owner was riding it, the blades were going, they stopped, he couldn't get it back on. I started it, took it out, hit the switch a few times, nothing happened. So the first thing I did, came back here, and I checked. Sorry, I don't have a light, I'm in the shed right now. And I checked to see if the fuses were okay. One fuse didn't look like it was burnt out, but more it looked like it was broken. Maybe somebody pulled it out, put it in one time, I don't know. So I checked the power going to the fuses. There was no power coming to it. Put another fuse in. Just did all the checking from the switch to the fuse. There wasn't anything coming one way, going one way or the other. I pulled the switch out. Checked the switch with a multimeter. And the switch was dead. It wasn't working properly. Then I ran a wire from the battery to the clutch to see if the clutch would click or do anything. The only thing the clutch did was start smoking the wire. The clutch is dead. Now I have the new clutch, the new switch, and that's what I'm going to be installing today. Plus, I'm going to change uh, both these fuses over here, put two brand new fuses in. Plus, to get this switch on this model, normally you would have the, uh, the controls up here. On this particular model, this is the Toro Z Master. I'm not sure the year of it. The switch is in the console under your legs. 
And to get that to get to that, you had to take these bolts out and it pulled right out. So the first thing I'm gonna do, put the switch in, put the fuses in, start this up, roll it outside, jack it up, drop the clutch, put the new clutch in. And on this clutch here, this is the first time I'm using this company, Gen 3. It's 8, 810 Gen 3 PTO clutches. I've read a lot of good reviews on this. Comes with a two year warranty. And comes with a two year warranty. Hopefully, this is as good as I read about it. And we'll take it from there. I'm gonna get started now, and before I pull the clutch out, I'll show you what it looks like underneath. I'm not sure if that's in the original video or not, and what has to be done. I have this mower up on the jack stand. Before we get started, I have to disconnect. Oh, it is disconnected, okay. Well, before you get started, you wanna disconnect the lead wire, because if you should drop that clutch, you could pull this out, break it, snap it, and cause another problem. Once that's off, come around. Gotta get another bracket under here. Gonna clean this up a little bit just to make it easier to work on. This bolt has to come out, and when it comes out, this clutch should fall right down. This bolt requires a 5 8 socket to it. So I'm gonna take this bolt out, drop the clutch, Check out the new clutch, slide it in, and on this particular clutch, like I mentioned earlier, I haven't used this clutch before, it says to burnish the clutch 30 times. What they mean by burnishing is to run the engine at a low RPM, pull the switch for the clutch, let the blades run for 15 seconds, shut them down, and start it all over again and do that for 30 times. It seems quite excessive. I called the company on that and there wasn't anybody there that could give me an answer on it. So I'm just gonna follow the instructions because they said it voids the warranty if you don't do this, if you don't do that. I'm installing this exactly to the manufacturer's instructions. So I'm gonna drop that clutch and I'll be back. All right, this has never happened to me before. This piece is the bottom of the clutch. Normally this just falls right out. It took me about 20 minutes to get this out of here. Because this... goes into this part of the clutch here. And like I said, normally this just falls right out when you take the bolt out. But there was rust in there. And what I did, I just kept turning it. With a big crescent wrench. Getting a screwdriver under there. Tapping a little bit. Turning, tapping, turning. And finally, it came out. I said, okay, well that's good. Now we can get to the clutch. Well, this is what happened with the clutch. This clutch came apart. Yeah, it's still not bad, but the problem now, the second part of the clutch is seized onto the shaft. And that's not the shaft there. The shaft is on the inside. Let me see if the camera gets a view of this. I don't know if the camera's picking this up. I'll see when I look at it later. But up in there, that's seized. Now, I don't know if I could get, put the bolt back in and get a big wheel puller. Might have to use heat, but if you use too much heat, at the end, the end of this, you have the seal where the engine shaft comes out of. So I'm not quite sure what to do over here. This is the first time I ran into this. Clutch came apart and it seized to the shaft. Gonna have to do a little uh, contemplation over here to see which way to go about this. Yeah. See, at first I thought this was, this was part of this it looks like it's seized here. See, so it looks like it's seized here, but it's not. This is all one piece. It's stuck on the inside. Yeah, I can use a air hammer. Trouble is that I'm, I'm at someone's house. I don't have all my tools here. I, have, I don't have a compressor or the air gun. And again, if you're using the air gun, you gotta be careful because you don't want to damage the seals on the inside of the engine. So, gonna have to kick this around a little bit. It looks like I'm gonna have to take another trip back here. This has become monotonous. Coming back and forth, waiting for parts to come in, and well, it is what it is. For now, that's all I can do. I gotta put that front panel back on, tighten up whatever I can, and uh, I don't know. I guess I'd be heading out. 
I'm just moving the camera around out on the bottom here. See if the camera picks up something I don't see. We view it later. Maybe it'll give me a little bit of a clue of what I'm looking at on top. And I can't get to the clutch from the top. I was hoping the top of the the top of the frame. Maybe I could put something down and start pounding from the top down. But it doesn't look like that's going to work either. Well, as far as the video goes, that's it for tonight. I said I was hoping there was a way I could get down in here, but I don't know. Once I figure this out, I'll be back. I jacked up this trailer using this old car jack, this bumper jack. This probably predates some of my viewers. But I have it jacked up. I have the two uh, ramps, one under each tire. Plus a 4x4 four four under there to get a little height so I could get under there. Now to get under there. I came back for two days and soaked this clutch with a 50-50 mix of acetone and transmission fluid. Wasn't sure if it was going to work or not. I was thinking all different methods to get this clutch off. But if you look right here, fluid was dripping down the shaft. So the fluid did get through. I videoed the installation of the new clutch. I don't know what happened to that video. I was working on this clutch for several days back and forth between the new clutch coming in and, and either I stopped the video in or I deleted it, I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna show you what the old one looks like. And here we are. The new one comes with the instructions. It's pretty basic. Here, hold this, John. And I'll, I'll show you what the problem was. Come right in here. This bearing right here was seized to the shaft. And the way I got it off, I went back several days. I was trying not to have to use a torch under there. This uh, zero turn has a gas tank on both sides of it. And I really didn't want to have a torch under there. Plus, I wasn't working at home. I was working away from the house. This was seized on. So what I did, I made a solution of acetone and transmission fluid, 50-50. I had a long hose and I just, I just ran the hose under the tractor to the top of this and kept squirting until I seen it drip over the edges. So once it started dripping over the edges, I let it be. Then the following day, I did it again. When I went back, you saw it earlier in the video, there was actually fluid dripping through here. I just gave it a couple of more taps, and I believe between that, I had this all disconnected, and I ran the tractor from outside to drive it in to the shed, and I let it run for a little bit. So here's was where it was seized. And when you put this back on, and this is what I thought I had in the video, you want to clean the shaft down that this slides over. Get the shaft good and clean. Don't use a file on it because it's a close tolerance. You don't want it slopping around in there. Get the shaft clean and put some never seize on it. So if you have to change your clutch in the future, you won't have that problem. If you don't have never seize, at least put oil on it. Put something on it. Don't put it on dry. And get in a little closer there, John. You can see that rust on the inside of the bearing. Okay, I was surprised this came off. I'm going to show you what this bearing looks like in pieces. Look that. Now this bearing, when it froze, it drew some extra amperage and it burnt out the uh, switch. But this clutch was on its way out. Besides the bearing, you can see how this plate's worn. It's actually broken here. I don't know if this broke while I was taking it off or if it was already worn out. But that's what the inside of it looked like. Yeah, this piece over here, you can see the, you see the way this is and you can see the rust in now the shaft doesn't come this far down but you can see where the shaft was touching it the rust that's in there and then we have this pulley this is the bottom this is the this pulley is the bottom pulley and this is the one that powers the blades and then you have this in there to hold it and again antices will be your best friend make sure you put it on that's a wrap. If you have any questions or comments, 
post them down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. It means a lot. Share it with someone else who may be able to use it. And if you haven't done so, subscribe. Hit that Joe Z button, and at the end of the video, be sure to ring that bell not to miss my new videos as I upload them. And until next time, stay safe.